Hello, everyone. I hope you're doing well today. So now we are working on our next uh, module. So let's go ahead and get into that. Share my screen with you. And we are now in module 14. Let's take a quick look at our overview and objectives. Identify the social economic impact of entrepreneurs in society. And we'll see how that ties into finances and accounting. Classify financial data about a company according to its respective financial statement. And we're going to have an exercise that involves this with the squeeze the day lemonade. Okay, so now let's see, we have our module level objectives that tie in with our course level objectives. We have a few activities here and the assignments. Let's just go ahead and go right into the module. Okay, so here we are. We have some resources here. And I want to show you that briefly. The first resource, and I think you will uh, find this very interesting, it's a review on Rockblock. Okay, this is a um, vinyl record player uh, type of uh, device. And uh, so we have a review on how well it works. And then we have our Shark Tank episode uh, where uh, this particular gentleman sells the entire company on Shark Tank. And what's so funny about this, when you watch the review and then you watch the Shark Tank episode, I think you'll find it um, quite humorous and uh, how it ties into finance and accounting. All right, let's move on. So go ahead and uh, go ahead and review those. I think you'll enjoy that very much. The slide deck here is on uh, the introductory finance and accounting, and that it really is just an introductory uh, lecture on it. We do have a quiz. So once you've reviewed the, oops, let's just go back to uh, the uh, module. Once you review this portion of the lecture, you can. Uh, go ahead and take that financial quiz because everything will be fresh in your mind and you'll be able to have a very successful quiz. There are only 10 questions and it's a very manageable quiz. Ties into everything that I'm going to be talking about in the lecture. And then we have the squeeze the day lemonade and I will show you how to go about uh, doing that assignment. But first, let me go through the slide deck so then when I discuss the assignment, you'll have a good feel for it. All right, so let's go ahead and open up that slide deck. All right, so we will go ahead and do the slideshow. All right, so when we look at, let me just move this out of the way here. So when we look at, um, you know, finance, finance itself versus accounting, finance is really where companies are looking at funding sources, they're looking at the capital structure and they're looking at increasing value for the firm as opposed to accounting is really recording of financial information uh, and keeping track, summarizing and analyzing that information. So a little bit different. You can see the differences here between finance and accounting. All right, so accounting, we're tracking the information. We're, finances, we're actually making that work for us to grow the company. So financing does provide a way to measure the financial health of a company. And there are two different types of accounting. There's financial accounting and there's managerial accounting. So financial accounting is having accurate financial statements. And so public companies are required to use GAAP, which is the General Accepted Accounting Principles. All companies should use GAAP, and follow those legal requirements for accounting principles and, uh, and generating those financial statements. Okay, and we'll go over those statements. So now managerial accounting is a little bit different. It's where you're looking at the financial data that you've generated from those financial statements, and now you're running ratios and you're looking at the ratios and benchmarking them 
to your peer group in the industry. So you're looking to see, well, how do I fare with the rest of the industry? Am I doing well in one area? Do I, am I doing poorly in another? What can I do? Uh, they take a closer look at that, uh, the uh, accounting to see what kind of changes can be made. All right, so now when we look at financial statements regarding accounting, well, there, are, there are more, but these are the three essential financial statements, the income statement, the balance sheet, and a statement of cash flow. And so all are important in running the accounting of a business, and they're essential for financial accounting. So let's go take a look at this in, in more depth. So income statements, show what happens over a period of time. They are usually like every month at the end of the month to see what happened during the course of that month. It can be the quarter, you could look at, you know, four different uh, months, putting them together to see what, what has happened. It can be a year to see what happened over the course of the year. And usually it's month to month, goes to quarter and then year, but it's all over a period of time to see what has transpired over that time period as opposed to a balance sheet, which is the information at a given point in time. So we look at where do we stand at this particular day in time with our balance sheet, very different from how have we performed with our income and expenses over a period of time. And then we have our cash flow, which is really important. Cash is king. And we must have cash or the company will fail. We need to have cash. Uh, it, 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 it's crucially important. And uh, we need to be able to look at our cash to make sure we do have cash flowing within the company. It flows in and out, but we need to make sure it's continually flowing in. All right, so let's uh, take another closer look here at the income statement. As I mentioned, it can be a quarter, monthly, usually they're done monthly and then accumulated over a quarter and then the year. And then there's usually compared one to the other. Like we'll look at one month to the next month to the next, and we'll look at the quarter to the next quarter and then a year to year. And usually we look at a three year span to see what's going on. And we wanna see how are we improving over time? Now the income statement is also referred to as a profit and loss statement. They are the same thing. It's nothing different. Also called the P&L for profit and loss. So income statements, profit and loss statements, P&L statements, they're all the same. So the income statement is broken down into these basic elements. We have our revenue. That's the money that's coming into the company. They're generated from sales, but there's some type of income. And so revenue can be called sales, can be called income. And then we have our cost of goods. And this, I'll go into that in more detail, but this is costs that are associated with that particular sale uh, and doesn't have anything to do with regular monthly expenses. It's if, if something is sold, there's an expense associated because there was a sale. And then once we subtract our cost of goods, we wind up with a gross profit. And when we look at that gross profit, we need to, to subtract our operating expenses. And those are fixed costs. Those are like rent and utilities and things like that. Those are costs that you have, even if you sell nothing. After that, we look at what is our pre-tax profit? It's really pre-tax and pre-interest uh, as well, like interest on loans. So we look at that. We're looking at just the operating expenses. Then we may look at whatever tax, you know, pre-profit taxes, profit that we have. Then we look at our taxes, interests on loans, that sort of thing. And then once all that's deducted, we have a net profit or net income. So let's break that down a little bit. When we look at, here's a, a nice little chart for us or table for us to take a look at. We have revenue, which can be income or sales, right? We deduct our cost of goods sold. That's associated with this particular sale. Uh, for instance, let's say I have an e-commerce business and I 
I pay for shipping. So I only have the shipping cost when I sell an item. So that's a cost of goods because it's associated with the sale of that particular item. It could be the packaging, the box that I have to put my item in to send it. I only ha have to pay for that box when I'm selling an item. So that's the only time there's a cost associated with that. And maybe some other packaging material that's associated with the sale of a particular item. So you can see it's only as it relates to that particular sale. We would only have that expense when we have a sale. And then we wound up with a gross profit. Gross meaning that we still need to subtract our operating costs, which, can, which are also called fixed costs. And they are rent, utilities, uh, insurance, uh, administrative salaries, things like that. So they're all tied into the expenses that we have on a monthly basis. All right, now they're called fixed costs, but that doesn't mean they're actually fixed. They're a fixed cost because you need to pay them every month. So they're called fixed, but that doesn't mean the amount stays the same. When we have a utility bill, it could fluctuate maybe as much as $50 a month. Uh, and depending on uh, whether it's the summertime, we have higher uh, electric bill than we do in the wintertime when we're not using our air conditioning as much. So it's not a fixed dollar amount. It's just that it's a fixed expense that we have to pay every month. And then we wind up with EBIT or EBITDA. And so EBIT is the pre-tax profit. That is after we've taken out our operating expenses, we have this profit amount, but we still have to take out our interest expense and taxes from there. And when we do, we wind up with a net profit. Okay, that is our bottom line, net profit, net income. It's also referred to as. But um, now when I, I said EBITDA also, DA, which is depreciation and amortization. I'm not going to go into that, but I wanted to bring it up so you're aware that there are other expenses uh, that are associated with EBIT or EBITDA. Okay, let's move on. So when we look at revenue, we're going to look at revenue and gross profit right here. So revenue, as I mentioned, anything that relates to income coming in, a sale coming in, either one sale, many sales, whatever it may be. And then as we deduct the costs associated with that sale, we have our gross profit. And then um, we have our net profit. So we're looking at all our profits. Our net profit is after all the expenses are taken away, what is our net profit or net income? When we look at our cost of goods, as I mentioned, anything associated with the sale. Uh, it can be items like, um, well, they're usually, a, they're called variable costs as opposed to operating expenses being a fixed cost. So because they vary depending on the sales, how many sales we have. So they are a variable cost. They can be shipping and handling, any type of sales cost, direct type sales cost. And then we're looking at that gross profit. Again, keep it as gross profit because we still have to deduct ex expenses. So we're looking at all those other uh, operating expenses to get our gross profit. And we can, we can, surmise a gross profit margin also. We can look at our gross profit and we can uh, divide it by our revenue. We could take our gross profit, divide it by our revenue, and we will have our gross profit margin. If we take our net profit and divide it by our revenue, we have our net profit margin. We can take anything along here, divide it by revenue, it's always divided by revenue, to find our Pro, our margin, whatever our margin would be. So here we go. Gross profit divided by revenue gives us that percentage of revenue. So it's always based on a percentage of revenue. It's always divided by revenue. Okay, so now our operating expenses uh, called fixed expenses, and I explained that before, it's not a fixed amount. It's fixed that is a fixed expense that it needs to be paid every month. Okay. So um, it's, the, it's the expenses that occur to the day-to-day -day operations of the business. 
Here are some other examples. Advertising and promotion, payroll for non-production uh, 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 personnel, salaried personnel, uh, employee benefits, rent, travel. Travel not associated with the sale of an item, but travel perhaps to conferences or some type of travel that's required. Uh, but it's a fixed expense. It's a uh, expense that's occurred on a regular basis. It may not be every month. It could be once a year, once a quarter. Uh, materials used for research and development and depreciation is part of operating expenses. So the EBIT, uh, it is earnings before interest and taxes, as I mentioned before. And then there's EBITDA, which is depreciation and amortization, uh, which ha would have its own category. It's really, when we look at EBIT, we're looking at how well is the company really doing? And what's important about EBIT, you may say, well, what do we really need to do this? I just really can just go from gross profit, subtract my operating expenses, and I have a net profit. Isn't that good enough? Why do I have to have this step in between to have EBIT? Uh, and the reason is that it is a good stepping stone area. If you ever want to sell your company, the buyer would be very interested in knowing the EBIT or EBITDA of the company because oftentimes uh, the taxes may change for them. And also they may not be borrowing uh, for and, and at the amount of money that you may have borrowed. So all of that information is taken out. If they're gonna pay cash for your business, they may not take out a loan. So the interest expenses and the taxes, if they have a different tax bracket because they're acquiring your business because they already have another business, so the tax bracket would change, it doesn't apply. So we need this little stepping stone in between to help us to understand EBIT. Okay, so um, again, as we mentioned, the interest expenses and taxes, they are basically, they're split out in two different categories for specific analysis. So interest is certainly uh, money that is paid out on a loan and debt, uh, but it is not included in the repayment of the loan. Okay, so it is just what has been paid out over time, right? So we said, what has happened over the course of the last month, quarter or year? And it is what has been paid out over that time and not what will be repaid. Okay, so um, taxes are really for, you know, any type of income, state, federal, in, there could be international taxes depending on the business and where it's located. Um, and, uh, if you don't make a profit, you usually don't have to pay tax, but you still need to file the taxes. All right, so now let's look here at an example, We've plugged in some numbers here. We have revenue of 100,000. Our cost of goods, COGS are half of that associated with it. So we have a gross profit of the other half, 50,000. Uh, we have our operating expenses of 20,000 a month. And then we have our EBIT at 30,000. Uh, it turns out that our interest expenses and taxes turn out to be $20,000. So now we're left with a net income profit of $10,000. We can see very plainly how this all spells out for us. So yes, the net profit is the final after-tax profit. That was our bottom line. So you may have heard that expression. What's the bottom line? The bottom line is net profit. And what is that bottom line? Now let's look at another income statement here. This is the balance sheet, uh, not another income statement, excuse me, another financial statement. The balance sheet, it's, uh, again, I'd mentioned it's data analyzed at one point in time, not over a period of time, like the income statement. So it's can, usually at the end of the year, uh, at the end of a quarter, it can be at the end of the month too. Uh, it can it, you know, it's just one, so if it's at the end of the month, it's the last day of the month. Well, what happened during the course of the month? Where are we today? What happened over the course of the month? We look at that with our income and expense statement, but the balance sheet tells us where we are that day at the end of the month. And it really is what the company owns and what the company owes, right? So let's take a look at that. 
So it's really, we're looking at assets. That is what the company owns, its assets. And then liabilities is what the company owes. And then what's left over is the owner's equity. I'm gonna go look at that. Um, yes, the clock stops. We're just looking at one given point in time. So assets, let's look at assets. What are they? Bank accounts, money available, cash on hand, trucks, machinery, computers, inventory, maybe a warehouse or several warehouses, furniture, software, uh, you know, accounts receivable, money that you have coming in uh, and you have not collected as of yet. All right, so you've made a sale, but you're allowing them uh, 30 days credit or 15 days credit, whatever it may be. You haven't received the money, but you've made the sale. That's an asset. So as, as an account receivable. Assets are broken down into current assets and long-term assets. Current assets are always less than a year. They can usually be liquidated fairly quickly. So they're considered something you can liquidate within a year or less. <clears throat> or a long-term asset or a fixed asset can uh, usually takes longer than a year to liquidate. Now, here's some example of long-term. They're usually like manufacturing machinery, very specific machinery, um, buildings, real estate, uh, robots, vehicles, that sort of thing. Uh, and so we can gauge the difference uh, between the two. I just want to mention also capital equipment as it relates to, you know, manufacturing machinery, building, these long-term assets are expensed over time. So when you have a long-term asset, uh, asset and you expense it over time, that is called capital equipment. Liabilities. Now let's look at the other category. We looked at assets. That's what we own. Now let's look at liabilities, what we owe. And we may have credit card debt. We may have accounts payable. Well, that's accounts payable is the opposite of accounts receivable. We haven't sold anything. We've bought something instead, but we owe the money. You know, we haven't paid it yet, uh, but we've ordered it and received it, but we owe the money. All right, so we still need to pay it because we've received the merchandise. Okay, rent, leases, payments, loan, you know, bank loans, uh, lines of credit, any type of prepaid sales are all considered liabilities. Then again, liabilities are broken down between current liabilities and long-term liabilities. The same logic applies. Current liabilities that can be paid within one year or less and long-term liabilities typically like mortgages that you know are paid over time auto loans uh things like that something that is paid over a long period of time uh, credit cards tend to be short-term uh or current liabilities so it's really uh just make this note here remember only things actually owed when the clock is stopped are considered liabilities on that balance sheet, not things owed in the future. Let's take a look at how this, uh, well, let's tie in one of the important elements here is the owner's equity, because we're really interested in knowing what are we going to make after doing all this hard work and looking at the balance sheet of our assets minus our liabilities, what do we have left over? We have our owner's equity. So it's really, it is the firm's net value or net worth, right? It's similar to a uh, professional statement of, uh, of net worth, but it's the business's net worth. And we're going to personal net worth uh, in the next module. So here, oftentimes the owner's equity is called stockholder's equity. And it is because if you have stockholders, then, and it's a publicly traded company, then it would not be owner's equity, it would be stockholder's equity. So um, when we look at owner's equity, it always equals assets minus liabilities. So we can see we have our assets, we minus our liabilities, and we're wound up with our owner's equity. Now this is the accounting equation. Assets minus liabilities equals owner's equity. And it can be, that equation can be turned around. I'm gonna show you, and it always balances. 
So we can have assets minus liabilities equals owner's equity, as I mentioned. We can have owner's equity minus assets equals liabilities or owner's equities plus liabilities equals assets. So no matter how you rearrange the equation, the accounting equation, it always balances. It will always turn out the same. All right, let's look at capital structure. So here, when we're looking at our assets, this is what we have. And we look at our liabilities and owner's equity, it's how we have it, right? How do we own it? We own it in liabilities or we own it in owner's equity. Now the owner's equity can be, maybe we have sweat equity, but we don't list sweat equity uh, because we've profited from that. It's in, automatically included because we've benefited in other ways, not having those expenses. Uh, but usually it is personal savings, retained earnings, and maybe investment money. Uh, so if you have a great deal of money and you want to re retain those earnings rather than taking the earnings out and paying the tax on it, you can retain those earnings depending on what type of business you have. If you have um, uh, a sub S corporation or a sub S company uh, corporation too, you can retain the earnings and you don't have to pay the tax on that. Um, if you have a, uh, a C corporation, you have to pay the taxes on whatever is left over. And then you also distribute those funds and then you pay tax on those funds as well. So that's a double whammy tax. All right, but anyway, back to owner's equity. Here we are, whatever's, whatever's left over here in monies uh, is our owner's equity. Liabilities, certainly kind of bank loans. Uh, if you issue a bond, then that is a liability as well. Now, uh, let's take a look at a balance sheet here. This kind of sums it up for us and kind of brings it together so we can see it in one, one space, right? So we look at, here's our assets. We have cash. We have accounts receivable. Money's coming in. Uh, we have inventory on hand. We may have some land, buildings, equipment, and, and some miscellaneous other assets that we have we've compiled in this category here. So that brings us to our 895. And then we have our liabilities. We have accounts payable. We have a loan that we have to pay. And that brings us to the 175. We have capital stock under owner's equity of $120. So this is maybe the stock that I put into the company uh, originally, I put in $120,000 to start the business. So that is my capital stock. That's my, that is part of the business, right? I put that money and eventually I want to pull it back out at some point. And then I have some retained earnings because I've done very, very well with the company and I want to retain the money in there because I want to reinvest it into the business. So I have 600,000 in retained earnings. So my total stockholders equity this is all the good money for me here is 720,000. And you can see the liabilities and stockholders equity, 895 equals the assets. The, the balance sheet always balances. <clears throat> Let's look at the uh, statement of cash flow. As I mentioned, cash is king. You must have cash. Or if you don't have cash and cash flow, especially the during the early part of a business, the business will not succeed. It will fail. The, the business, cash is the lifeblood of a business. So if you think in terms of, you know, your own checking account each month, you know, you have a, a balance at the beginning of the month, you have money coming in, maybe a paycheck, maybe you sell some stuff, you have some gifts, you know, maybe you lend money and you receive the loans back, but you have money coming in. And then you have money going out, bills, lots of bills, right? So you have money going out on a regular basis. This is cash flow. And then at the end of the month, you either have a positive or you have a negative. With a business, if you have a negative, you are going to go out of business. You may be able to sustain it for a very short period of time, uh, if you have an in influx of, if you have a loan or uh, you have extra, you have money available for you. But if at the end, if you have negative cash flow, then you are going to fail in that business. Then it's time to consider something else. 
We want to see a positive cash flow at the end. We want to, you know, position ourselves that we can make that happen. What can we do? What can we do if we have a negative? We could maybe take out a loan, as I mentioned, go to credit cards, ooch, that's kind of scary. I don't really like that. Um, especially if you hold on to credit card balances, maybe family, et cetera, uh, see what you can do. You can forecast your cash flows and your inflows and outflows over maybe a six month period. But if you have consistent uh, negative balance month after month, uh, it, it is a bad proposition and you need to really uh, pivot, try something new, do something totally different because the business will not uh, survive. It must have cash to survive. Let's take a look at unit economics. So what, you know, what really makes sense economically here? So what it, what's an important concept here is when we look at gross profit, the gross profit margin per unit. So what per unit means like each item we sell. Now we could sell it, say we're selling cans of some kind of specialty soda that we've created. We may sell an individual can, or we may sell them in a six pack, or we may sell them in a case. Hey, we went over this uh, in the last module, but let's just say that we sell wine and we sell bottles of wine. And so we have our unit price per bottle of wine that we need to sell. Maybe we sell cases of wine, whatever it may be, but let's just say bottles of wine. We sell bottles of wine and we just sell them as bottles for the sake of this demonstration. And then we would also look at if we sold cases of wine separately. So that would be a separate unit of analysis here. But let's just look at single bottles of wine. And we want to know how many do we need to sell to break even each month? And where in the month do we break even? That's also an important component. So let's take a look here at our break even analysis. We have our regular monthly expenses. So we have rent, insurance, utilities, right? We have all these expenses. And what are these? These are fixed expenses, right? These are operating expenses. These are the expenses that we incur even when we don't have any sales. And we're going to add another item here. And that is our, our desired profit because we don't wanna do all this work and not have pull any profit out for ourselves, for our own, uh, our own way of surviving, right? So we want to be able to say, all right, I want a $5,000 profit per month for myself. And so then I want to find a break-even analysis at $10,000 a month, right? This is all everything considered. And so what I do is I look at my gross profit margin per unit, right? Per bottle of wine. I'm selling my bottles of wine for $10 a bottle. So that's what I have here. But it costs me $6 in COGS, in cost of goods, to sell that bottle of wine. And so my gross profit after my cost of goods is $4. And I can look at this in percentage ways too. 100% is the $10, 60% for cost of goods. I wind up with 40% gross profit margin. Okay, now, I want to break this down to figure out, well, you know, at this point, how many bottles of wine do I need to sell to break even to reach my 10,000? So I take my 10,000, I divide it by my $4, right? So $4 per gross profit. And it tells me that I need to sell 200, uh, 2,500 bottles of wine each month to break even. Right now, I need to also consider when in the month do I break even? Do I do I sell twenty five hundred bottles at the last day of the month? Well, that's okay. I'm still good, you know. But perhaps I break even and sell twenty five hundred dollars the second week of the month. Then hallelujah, I have made a lot more profit in that month. Uh, because now my profit increases, all right? So you can see that now I don't have those monthly expenses and all that extra money goes to profit, which soars my profit. So we want to pay attention to where in the month do we sell the 2,500 units, not just that we do sell those 
2,500 units in a given month. We can also look at dollars. So we look at the dollar break-even amount. And so, oops, let's get back there. So when we have, we have our 10,000 again, which is our total monthly expenses on the top of the equation. Now we're dividing it by the 40%. So we're putting 40 and we wind up with 25,000. You can see that's basically a simple math equation here. But at that point is where we break even in dollars. We need to sell $25,000 worth of wine to break even. Now, when do we sell that $25,000 worth of wine? At the end of the month, in the middle of the month, it makes a difference because at the end of the month, we make our 5,000 desired profit. But if it's earlier in the month and we're still selling, we're still cranking out those sales, we're making a lot more profit because our monthly expenses have all stayed the same. So our profit soars. So important to consider break even. So now when we look at our fixed expenses and also mentioned, they're also called operating expenses. They're not actually fixed, remember? It's just that they're, it's a fixed expense that we have to pay every month, but the, the dollar amount could change. Rent would probably stay the same, but our electric bill, our utility bills may change, right? If we're paying electric in the summer, uh, it's probably gonna be higher than it is in the winter using more electricity for air conditioning. And so an advertising may change, could be consistent over a certain period of time, but it, it could change. But these are all kind of examples of fixed or operating expenses. Now we also have to consider startup costs. And this also, um, you know, pertains to us starting a business. We need to figure out how much do we need to invest to start this business? Uh, oftentimes we can't just start from nothing. We need to put together things. We need things. We may need some equipment. Perhaps we need office furniture. Maybe we can make do with what we have until we can, you know, get something down the road. But we may need some development costs. We may need um, to hire some people. We may be able to do it ourselves and not have to worry about that in the very beginning. We may need to promote somehow, maybe just business cards, a website. Um, usually today, at least we need a website. $1,000 may not be enough for a website, but maybe we could start with something small and work. Uh, but any type of promotional activity, licensing, just starting the business, sun biz, you know, registering the business, uh, maybe you need a rental deposit if you need an actual physical location, utility deposit if you've never uh, had a business before, uh, insurance, you need that up front as well, beginning inventory, you may need that, legal fees, you know, setting up your LLC. And so in this particular example, it's like $11,000, you know, and we want to be able to consider that as we're uh, getting started or getting ready to start a business. The other thing I just want to mention is that most startups typically show a loss in the first year. They've had these startup expenses. They're not generating a lot of income in the first year. And so there's a lot of expenses. They still have the fixed expenses. They have the startup expenses. And it's difficult to really show a net profit margin in the beginning of a first year. Usually it takes a couple of years to show a profit. Budgeting, let's take a look at uh, a little bit of budgeting and how it factors in. A variance is the difference between an amount that you've budgeted, let's say your actual revenue turns it to be a million dollars a year, and you've budgeted, you know, 800,000 and just saying, well, that's the revenue budget. That's my revenue. That's what I'm expecting to, to earn. I sold a lot more wine than I thought I would sell. So I have a variance of $20,000. Isn't that awesome? So that is a great place to be. And we want to have that positive variance uh, moving forward because then we can reposition ourselves better for the following year to have our... Um, better budgeting revenues. 
quickly, uh, I'm just showing you an income statement here of what one would look like. And then we're going to go into doing the uh, squeeze the day ass assignment. So the first thing I'd like you to do next, though, is to take the quiz. Everything's fresh in your mind right now. So go ahead and take the quiz and then come back, uh, you know, pause this uh, and uh, this uh, video and then come back and I'll go over the squeeze the day for you. So please go ahead, take that financial quiz really quickly and then we can go ahead and start this. Okay, so now here is the squeeze today uh, case study. And so we read over the information here about what's going on and what the uh, this uh, small company, right? The startup company wants to do uh, what they want to, um, to earn, right? So we can see, we read this over and we can see what that they want a 10% net profit margin. And let's see, if that's the case, here are all the transactions. And so what we do is we download our Excel spreadsheet. We can open that Excel spreadsheet and you can see it right here. So I like to split screen and then have it here or if I have double screen. And then what I do is I look and see what is the first line item here? Uh, purchased high quality lemonade mix. Now, where would that go on the, so this also tells me this is for the end of September. So this is the end of September statement here. So where would the purchase high quality lemonade mix go in here? Well, if you're not selling the lemonade, you're not buying the mix. So it is a cost of goods. So we would add it to our cost of goods here. And then we look at uh, purchased packages of hibiscus tea bags. And where would that go? And then we look at the next item, purchased 50 gallons of spring water from Publix. We add that. Uh, and then now we go into our sales, sold 25 gallons of lemonade. We put that where it belongs. Paid herself $50 in labor, right? For Because if we read the narrative above the case study, she wants, she spent five hours worth of work. She wants to pay herself $10 an hour, $50. So we include that. And then we go on down the rest of the list here and appropriate everything. And then we look at our net profit and we determine our net profit margin. How do we do that? We divide this amount here by our revenue. Margins are always divided by revenue. So we would put that information in here and then we are going to address the questions down here, part one and we address those questions, and then we move on to part two, and we're going to complete the October statement, and you will complete that by just following the instructions. I think it'll be very, it's a simple uh, spreadsheet, but it gives you a, a nice feel for what needs to be done. Okay, so that should be, if you do have any questions on this, please go ahead and reach out to me, and I'm happy to go over anything with you on a one-to-one -one basis. So that covers everything for module 14. Then we'll move on to the next module, module 15, which happens to be one of my favorite, and, and I think you will enjoy it very much.